So, welcome back to this creative monster design tutorial series. In this part, we're going to UV unwrap this model in Autodesk Maya. This version of Maya, I believe, is 2011. And, uh, yes, we're going to use some very... It's not going to be too difficult or advanced. It's going to be using pretty simple techniques. And I'm going to show you pretty much the entire process, actually. So, let's get right into it as we do. So starting off here, uh, I did export uh, the lower res version of it, which I did retopologize in ZBrush, if you really wish to know. Uh, I did record that because it's basically the exact same as I did with the uh, tree I made last time uh, in the Bonsai Tree Tour series. So if you wish to know how to use unwrap, or sorry, if you wish to know how to how I retopologize, you can look there. Uh, so I have the the low poly here, and currently I'm just cleaning it up a bit because I noticed that I didn't have a, um, a straight edge loop throughout the middle. I had cut some edges to make them into quads, which I didn't want. So uh, I believe also the merging process when I did merge the two sides, as I did have it mirrored, I uh, messed some things up. So I'm just cleaning up now with the split polygon tool. And you can see what I've done here is I've done a planar map from the uh, z-axis, so it's a front view. Generally, I do this because uh, standardly, uh, models tend to have a really kind of odd, um, you know, standard UV setup is really broken. So just to get myself set up, I tend to do one of these frontal like planar mappings just to get the seams right because that what that does is only makes it makes no seams except the ones that are you know natural to the model like holes and stuff so you can basically set all that you want uh, separately so here I'm setting up some seams here what I did was I cut through half of the middle and then I cut out the bottom as well uh, generally this is a good idea for spherical shapes to do it like this and then uh, you know using unwrap and pinning some vertices uh, which I believe I have a tutorial on although it's a bit old and a bit shit so I might do a new, new one on that because I'm pinning some vertices, the corners mainly, and going in both with the uh, standard unfold tool and the interactive unfold tool, which is are both interesting. The interactive one is more of a relax, really, uh, because it only does the select ones you have, and you can see now I'm trying some more pinning to to kind of even the the flow out. And what you want is to, if you don't know really the basics of UV mapping, uh, you want these checkers on the model to be as even as you can. And what you can see right now is that the, the ones on the inside and the ones on the bottom are the ones that are smallest, which means they get mo most texture space, which is not correct. Because what we want is those parts will barely ever be shown in the final model. So what we want to have small checkers are the frontal bits, like what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to enhance those. And basically, the, the, the more space a bit gets in the UV texture editor, or the UV space, uh, the, more, the smaller checkers it'll get. That's kind of the way it works. So, what I'm doing here is trying to like figure out exactly how I can do this the best way possible. And it turns out that without splitting it a ton, I'm not going to be able to do too much. I'm still going to have a bit more texture space like on these unnecessary bits than I'd like. But unfortunately, that's just the way I'm going to have to do it, because I don't want too many seams. Here you can see I'm trying to cut out this inner bit, which actually I might keep. I'm not entirely sure how I decided to do this, I, I don't really remember, but that's another option you can have. If you cut out the inside edge loops right there, you can actually do a bit more... You, you can give it a bit more space, and you can actually then sew them back in if you want to kind of keep it. Now I'm going to do some manual stuff. Generally, if you are new ma mapping so something really organical like this, is, you kind of want to keep... You don't really want to do any manual work too too much, because that generally does just tend to tend to stretch your UVs. What I tend to do is actually do a bit of manual work followed by... Uh, using some of those manual, using some of those uh, UVs, uh, UV verses to to pin actually. So it, it's kind of a combination of those. Like you see, what I have right there is I still have too much space on the bottom, which is a bit of using. And I did rotate the thing just to make it a little bit easier to see what's actually up and down. Because whilst you might might think that the bottom side right now is up on the UV little UV shell, that's not the case actually. It just looks like that. So I think this is what I'm going to end up with. It's not perfect by any means. I could have done a much better job, really, but for what it is, I think it's going to be fine. I don't really... I mean, it's fairly even. There's some stretching going on, mostly in the pouches right here, because generally uh, I could do those separately and get less stretching, but, you know, I don't really feel the need to right now. I know that's not going to be a big deal afterwards, and what I did there was kind of mess things up, so I'm going to fix that right now. Uh, I'm trying to give them more space, but it's not really working out. Sometimes the UV shell doesn't really want to work with you at all, so you just have to go to deal with that most of the time. But you see, it's fairly even. Uh, it's a bit on the small side, I suppose, and I wish it um, was a bit better, but, I mean, it's the best to that. I mean, it's, it's pretty good so far, and I'm kind of happy with that. Now I'm doing one of the fingers. What I'm going to do is actually do 
UVs on one finger, then duplicate those UVs over to the others, uh, because the fingers are all pretty much ident identical when it turns, uh, when it you know turns out to that be that. And that's kind of what I did uh, with the geometry as well. While while the top apologizing, I did only make geometry for one finger and then duplicate it over, so you can see if I ever highlight the other fingers that the geometry is exactly the same. So they are pretty much the identical object they, uh, as each other, but they have. Uh, just a bit different in locations, you know, different rotations, stuff like that. So, again, I did a frontal EV, EV map there, planar mapping, and uh, from the z-axis, just to get some simple stuff up, and now I'm setting up a seam. You want to just kind of basic uh, UV mapping principles. You want to keep the seam that you have going through the model. You want to keep that as hidden as you can. So, what I'm selecting here is actually the inner bits, a, a seam that goes on the inside of the finger. Uh, actually, no, no, what I'm selecting now is actually one that goes on the side of the finger because I'm trying that out. And now I'm using the interactive UV tool here. And this is me pinning these two, that's why I'm doing that weird thing. Uh, just to make it a bit straight, because generally the interactive UV tool tends to do them in the do cylinders a bit oddly, because obviously this finger is not straight, so it tends to try and mi mimic that shape in the UV shell, which is not something we want. We want it to be as straight as we can, because it'll be easier to texture that way. So that that was very easy. It's very easy to UV unwrap, you know, cylindrical shapes, which you might have uh, recognized from when I did the UVs on the tree tutorial. A lot of that was cylindrical, and which was very easy. Generally, what you want to do for cylinders tends to be just cut the bottom and the top plane off and then p put a single uh, constant running edge loop as a seam throughout the model and then just UV unwrap and that tends to work. I'm trying to transfer the attributes, which is transfer the UVs here, which generally does work if you have an identical object, but what happens here is a bit odd because uh, it tends to work but then, you know, sometimes it just messes up and you can see that that's kind of happened now. It did work, I think. I think I got it working now for the, this one, but you can see when I try to do the other one, it gets all over the place and basically just messes, you know, completely. Yeah, nothing works in it, so... I think in the end I might have to actually just duplicate the mesh again and then copy the transform values and then, you know, just to keep the UVs. Because obviously since the fingers are the same, there's no need to waste UV space on each individual one, uh, since, you know, that I'll be doing the exactly identical thing on both of them anyways. <clears throat> so, you know, if I, it's easy just to keep them overlapping so that when you paint on one, you paint on the other. I can see what I'm having going on here. Yeah, the other one's a bit weird. So what I'm trying to do now is just duplicate the mesh over. And since I actually have it a bit oddly set up, I can just copy the transform values because I don't really have those left. So I'm trying to do it manually now. Which, as awkward as it might seem, works alright. I mean, I'm trying the uh, old snap. A, I'm snapping this, the pivot of the the other mesh to a pivot on its or to one of its vertices and I'm snapping it uh, with holding down V and snapping it to the same you same vertice on the other mesh to make to get them matching up so that basically made them perfect and actually I think yeah I didn't actually want them to be overlapping oh yeah because of the normal map since if you have overlapping UVs the normal map doesn't really tend to like you uh, so I, I for this time I did keep them separate uh, but, you know, that's all fine. We don't really care about that. So, now I'm doing the spine, it's uh, or the, the tail, I suppose it is. This is a bit more tricky, but it's still basically just a cylindrical shape. There are just a couple of them to get stitched together. So, all you need to do is separate these different cylindrical shapes into different objects or different shells, and then UV unwrap those. And again, I, I pretty much always, when I UV unwrap organical things, I tend to start off with a planar map from whatever axis I, I feel fit, because that's just the easiest way to get them matching up. Uh, because otherwise you get a lot of weird seams randomly everywhere. So here, you can see I selected the, the top edge right there to separate these two bits, and which makes them obviously very, very, a lot easier to unwrap. Because, I mean, technically I probably could unwrap a lot of this as one piece, but that'll be make it a lot, very, very odd shape. And you want to keep these things for the layout process eventually, you want to keep them kind of, you know, straight-ish, just so you can stack them easily, easier. And so you can see now I th I think, I, <laughs> I I thought myself that I had all the seams correct, but I, apparently I did not. I think there's like one edge I missed, missed somewhere that uh, messes everything up, and I didn't cut the actual, I didn't cut the cap off. You can see it right there in the, more or less, the, the end of the tail, the little couple, you know, five or so faces that connect the uh, the end of the tail, which I do need to, um, I do need to cut off, because you can see that's what it's doing right there, the, the top bit there, it kind of weirds everything out, which I'm gonna, I haven't realized yet, I'm going to realize here in a minute. 
uh, again using Penny because the I tried actually this is actually me trying it I think it, it, everything in one single shell uh, which is going to make it really really tall and I'm not going to keep that I'm going to have to split that up into different sections because whilst keeping it in one entire mesh. Uh, keeping it in, like in one time mesh and really really tall like that. It does help because you don't get in as many seams across the model, but what it also does is it kind of eats up space on the UV layout uh, process, you know. You, you have to assign either a lot, a lot of space to it, or uh, you have to have it be smaller than you sh it should be. So it's easier just to split it up in one or th two bits and then keep them separate and keep them larger. Uh, because that makes it easier to put them up. Because you generally need to, when unwrapping these things, you need to keep the UV layout process in mind constantly. Because that's one of the... That's as important as the unwrap, if not more important. So, uh, you need to keep that in mind whilst actually doing this. Is that, therefore, you need... Especially whilst keep, you know, considering what you want to cut off and what, what kind of shells you want, stuff like that. And you can see what I'm doing right here. I'm kind of trying to keep it one shell, but yeah, we'll end up just cutting that edge off and then separating the two. <clears throat> which is what I meant to do it in the first place. You know, generally, you tend to miss a lot of things, like, when doing this stuff, and it's that's why the UV texture editor is so good. It really does show what you missed very easily. So there's another cap I forgot to cut off, uh, I think. Did I? There's something we Oh, yeah, I, f I forgot to make a seam across there, because, you know, that, that, that has to be there. So I'm going to do that, that right now and try and unwrap it, which makes it really tiny, so I need to do more pinning. Uh, since this is such an odd shape, that's why I need to do so much pinning. Generally, when just uh, UV unwrapping these sort of organic models, you don't actually need to do that much matter to work. It tends to just work out if you do the seams and then unwrap it, and tends to kind of do everything for you. But since mine was very curved and very kind of odd, oddly put, it needed a bit more manual tweaking than uh, normal. <coughs> so, which I actually think is good, because I'll, I'll, I'll get to show you kind of the uh, process I use. In a complete matter. It's not, I mean, this model is very easy. Again, organic meshes I find to be way easier to unwrap than mechanical meshes. Although I think that actually the, the layout process for the organic meshes is a, is a bit trickier than mechanical stuff because mechanical stuff tends to be a lot of straight lines, which makes the uh, layout process a bit easier because you can easily fit them together with each other. And, uh,. Uh, with organic stuff, you get, tend to get re these really odd C shapes and these odd, like, banana-like shells, and which really just do nothing but mess you up. Also, quick tip, which I'm not being able to show you interactively here, because this is obviously pre-recorded. If you hold Control and right-click, and then go to Shell, it selects the entire shell of the UV vertice that you have selected, and, you know, that's something I use constantly, although I think the video is a bit too quick for you to notice that. Uh, you can see I scaled the two up, because scaling them up gives, obviously, it gives more checkers, which makes it easier for me to spot what is not uh, stretching and what is stretching and what's not getting too much space and what's not, you know, stuff like that. So, whilst keeping them small, um, it's, it's, what, it's, what going to, it's what's going to happen in the end. Uh, right now, I'm keeping them large, because it's just easier to view that way. Going in selecting different portions, this is basically me uh, relaxing the mesh, you can see it's selecting different... Uh, intervals, kind of sections of the mesh with the interactive UV unfold tool and uh, going at it because, uh, you know, that's all good. Sometimes it doesn't quite work out, you know, the, the interactive UV unfold tool is a bit dodgy at times, but generally it does give a good effect. And when you do look at these checkers, uh, some may look stretched to you, but that's actually because of the geometry. Because something is, like, sloped, then the checker becomes sloped as well. And if you just rotate the view to look at it straight on, it looks straight. So you need to kind of keep that in mind as well. Everything that looks stretched isn't actually stretched. Most of it, or, well, not most, but a lot of it is, uh, you know, otherwise. And see, I split it up right here just because I wanted it to, you know, be a bit, get a bit more space. Obviously, this is a bit costly if you don't want any seams, but generally seams tend to be, a, you know, easily fixed well, in something like body paint or, you know, just using something like that. Generally, body paint tends to be my favorite uh, method of getting rid of seams. Or if you're really, really good with 2D texturing, then you can do that as well, but I don't think I'm not that good. Again, trying to fix a bit of this uh, scaling, and <laughs> that looks a bit weird, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's not... UV mapping is something a lot of people loathe, and I understand why people use tools that, I mean, 
to be fair, the Maya UV tools are actually very good. I have, that's, it's basically the only thing I use to make my UVs, no matter what the model is. I know there are, like, the uh, different, like, UV, UV wrapper, uh, I think is one of them, and that's really cool, cool as well, but I haven't really tried it too much. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I don't know exactly how good others are, or how, if this is actually kind of subpar compared to them, but personally I prefer it, because, uh, Especially if you like read topologies in Maya, just using completely staying inside of the Maya native user interface is very, very comfortable, if nothing else. So, you can see I have, I think I have all of the different bits here unwrapped, except for the eye, which is obviously very, very simple. I'm going to do that in a minute here. Uh, doing the run now effect. I think I'm going to actually delete the half bottom of this because it's never going to be shown. Yeah, you can see what I'm doing right there. Uh, because obviously, since I'm not going to be animated, the only bit that's going to be shown is the top bit, so I only need that. And therefore, what I'm going to do to unwrap it is very simply do a planar mapping from the y axis, I believe, it is, is what I'm going to do here. Yes, indeed, I want to do it right there. And that's pretty much given me what I want. I'm just going to scale the outer rim out a bit because it's not really getting enough space. And there we are. That's pretty perfect. Uh, UV mapping, you know, half sphere is just very easy. I could use sphere, spherical mapping as well, which would, would give me a very good result as well because obviously this is a basically a sphere. But for this, I didn't really want to. I like planar mapping, it's nice. Mechanical objects, even mechanical objects, I tend to use planar mapping on. Uh, I. Automatic mapping is actually not as bad as you may think for mechanical models if you want to do a lot of manual work, but it does take more time, so that's something you want to consider. Uh, so now I'm kind of scaling all the different shells to get them to a pretty equal size. You want to keep your size uniform. Uh, now I think I restarted Maya and went out of high quality mode, which is why the texture is looking a bit odd. Uh, but yes, yeah, so you want to actually keep in mind scaling all the shells at once so that you, get, you don't get one bit that's way bigger than anything, everything else. Because the, that will, you know, make... It'll just give you a lot, b bunch of trouble uh, later on. <coughs> so, let's see what I'm doing here. Now Now comes the Tetris stage of the uh, text of the UV unwrapping process. And I, I have a, a couple of UV mapping videos on my channel. So I think I have a time lapse of it uh, somewhere. And I have uh, the very, very old guide to it, which... People still watch and people still enjoy, which I, I'm glad, but I think is utter cry crap, and I need to kind of fix it. I need to make a new one, which is, I think, on the uh, on the way, let's say. <laughs> yes. So, we're actually coming up on the edge, uh, on the end of the video here. Not not quite, we have a bit left, but mostly we're done. We're just going to fit these into together. And obviously, when placing these, you want to keep in mind what you want to have most detail. So, uh, on this model, obviously, I want the spine and the body to have the most details. I'm keeping those the largest, and the fingers a second after that, and the eye, obviously, is getting enough. Not too much space, but enough space. Uh, so, this layout, don't get me wrong, it's not perfect, it's actually quite crappy if you, you know, think about everything, but, uh, <laughs> I could have made it a lot better, but personally, I found this to be okay. It's, you want them to squeeze together as well as you can, and I, I think I could have done a bit better than this. Uh, you can see right now I'm scaling it down for no apparent reason. I could make that bottom bit a bit bigger, and these I'm kind of scaling it now. I don't, I don't want to scale these too much individually. Uh, because that does mess things up quite a bit, usually, but, uh, yes, you can see, I think I'm done here. So, that was this part, you can see the UV map there, it's not, not perfect, but it's not too bad, so, I'm happy with it. So, I'll see you next time for what's going to be the poly painting and the texturing process, which is going to be la the last part, single tier, I know. So, thanks for watching, and I will hopefully see you in the next video. Thanks.